what are the great circles that we know about? Well, meridians and their anti-meridian together is a complete great circle. Any two points on a meridian is a great circle track between those two points. The equator is a great circle. And any line that bisects the globe into two equal sections, okay, and remember this line on this diagram is going all the way around the Earth. So it's going up that way and then around the back of the Earth to the same point, okay? And later we'll be talking about the properties of a great circle and particularly these two points, the one down at the bottom there, which is the southern vertex of that complete great circle, and that point at the top, which is the northern vertex of that particular great circle. And each part of a great circle will also have a vertex. Um, I'll say now, at the vertex of a great circle or part of a great circle, the track will either be east or west, 090 or 270. And at the vertex of a great circle or part of a great circle, that will be the highest latitude crossed. Just remember those two things. We'll say it over and over again. Um, however, let's have a quick look now. And it is the shortest distance between two points on the surface of the globe. The other thing to remember with uh, great circles is that they are the lines followed by radio waves. So if you're receiving uh, information from an NDB or from a VOR, that uh, information is following a great circle track between you and your aircraft and the beacon. How we actually deal with that depends whether that beacon is a VOR or a NDB, because a VOR does all the measuring at the facility, at the VOR, whereas an NDB, uh, the bearing is worked out at the aircraft. So if you're given a couple of variations to use, if it's a VOR, you use the variation at the VOR. If it's the NDB, you use the variation of the NDB. We'll see more of that later. But first of all, let's talk about the vertex properties of a complete great circle. So in this example, we have a great circle track. Now that track could be going uh, pre pre predominantly in an easterly direction, or it could be running down the other way and going in a southwesterly direction on this, this particular face, okay? In this example, we're gonna say that the great circle crosses the equator at 25 east, longitude, and that is 25 east, because it's on the western edge of Crete, um, on a track of 050. Now, we're using two-dimensional uh, trigonometry here because of the uh, 2D diagram. However, it, it will explain what we're trying to get at quite adequately. We cross, let's say we cross the equator at 25 east on a track of 050. So this this particular great circle is moving up this way, if I'm tracking it, okay? 050 means there's the datum to the magnetic, sorry, the true North Pole, and therefore I've got 50 degrees to the right as I cross the equator, therefore 050 true is the track of that great circle crossing the equator, which means that using two-dimensional trigonometry, uh, that angle in there has got to be 40 degrees. Okay, so let's pop that in there, 40 degrees in there. Which means that that, using geocentric um, type latitude, is 40 degrees north. Okay, and it is the northern vertex of that great circle. So it's at 40 degrees north, and if you imagine that this line has got to go 180 degrees to get to the, the equator on the other side of the Earth, therefore that northern vertex will be 90 degrees further on from where it crossed the equator, which was at 25 east. So the northern vertex is going to be at 40 north and 115 degrees east, i.e. 25 plus 90.
so at that northern point the track will either be 090 or or 270 and the direction we're going is in the easterly direction so it's 090 at that point what happens then is it starts to um, go down the other side of the earth and when it crosses the equator at the opposite side its track will be 130 so if you think about it um, its track at this side was uh, that 090 minus the latitude, the track at the other side will be that 090 plus the latitude. So its track will be 130 and its longitude will be 90 degrees further on from 115 east, which if you do the sums comes out at 155 west. So that is where it crosses the equator of the opposite side of the earth. You will also see that the numbers have been increasing going easterly in the northern hemisphere. We'll come back to this later. But we've gone from 050 to 090 to 130, heading east in the northern hemisphere. The numbers have been increasing. We're still heading east from the other side of the equator. However, we're in the southern hemisphere now. So the southern vertex down here will still have a track of 090, and it will be 90 degrees further on from 155 west heading east, so 65 west. And then all the way around again across the equator at 25 east heading 050. Okay, so that is the properties of a vertex of a great circle or part of a great circle. Do remember though that every part of a great circle will also have a vertex as well. Highest latitude crossed track 090 or uh, 270 and in this case we decided on 090. Okay right great circles continuing. Um, the meridians converge so the great circle crossing the meridians, change the angle as each successive meridian is crossed. And that's what this concept of convergency means. It means that between two, any two points, the great circle track will change. Okay, 